Ok Rap futuristico Rap futuristico Well I think it's been a very hit and miss tournament for Italy so far to be honest I mean I thought they were terrific in the opener against Spain and the 3-5-2 formation worked really well I think they were possibly helped in that game by the fact that Spain started the match with no recognised strikers and, and seemed to just want to pass the ball into the net. But I thought it was a good performance and it was, it was a good point to get the tournament off and running. I thought they played reasonably well during the first half against Croatia as well, but they seemed to panic a little bit in the second half and, you know, they struggled at times to contain the likes of Mandzukic and Modric and Jelovic, while I think Cassano and Balotelli each had a poor game against Croatia. You know, and, and you know, if you look at the Ireland game, there seems to be a lot of negativity surrounding that performance. But I thought that despite a, a pretty nervy start and a few hairy moments in the second half, they actually played some good stuff, particularly in that 15 minute spell before half time, you know, when they, they dominated possession, created a number of chances, and you know, that resulted in Cassano's goal. And I think that Balotelli's goal against Ireland, that's going to have done him the world of good. It's by no means been perfect, and I think that's pretty obvious, but I think that having managed to get into the quarterfinals, having finished the group stage unbeaten, it's not too bad considering the disarray that they were in coming into the tournament. I think Daniele De Rossi deserves an honourable mention for adapting so well when played at the centre of the back three in the first two games. And, you know, I think he had a decent game against Ireland too. But I'm going to go for Andrea Pirlo. And that's ignoring what was, by his own admission, a pretty poor performance against Ireland. And, you know, you would hope that that was just a one-off, but I thought he was excellent in the games against Spain and Croatia. And even at the age of 33, his ability to cover the ground that he does never ceases to amaze me. He rarely looks hurried when he's in possession, and his eye for a pass remains as good as it's ever been. And, you know, that could be seen when he played in Di Natale for the opener against Spain. And his free kick against Croatia it was just sublime. So yeah, I mean, ignoring what was, by his standards, a pretty average display in the final group game, I think he's definitely been Italy's standout performer by some distance so far. I think Prandelli will set the side up similar to how he did against Ireland. Uh, you know, Chiellini is obviously going to be a big loss at the back, but, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if he stuck with the back four, with Barzagli and Bonucci getting the nod at centre-back. I thought Federico Balzaretti had a, a very impressive game playing on the left, both defensively and in coming forward against Ireland. So I'd be very surprised if he didn't keep his place too. I think he'll stick with the diamond in midfield while up front. I think dropping Balotelli against Ireland, you know, that seemed to get the desired response from him. So I wouldn't be surprised to see him start up front again with Di Natale having to make do with a place on the bench again. Well, I think the game against England is going to be won and lost in midfield. So with that in mind, I think Italy really need to try and make sure that Steve Gerrard isn't able to dominate the possession and dictate the play from the centre of the park. You know, I think, I think Gerrard, he's a couple of years past his best, but he's, he's already proven this, this tournament what a, what a good player he is. You know, he set up three of England's five goals during the group stage. And with Wayne Rooney back in the side and with 90 minutes to, you know, to get his fitness back, I think there's a real danger for Italy that those two could combine to, to good effect. And as I say, you know, keeping Gerrard quiet is going to be key to winning this game. I think they will, to be honest. I mean, as I say, I think whoever comes out dominant in the centre of midfield will win this game. And as good as Gerrard is, you know, he is still prone to giving the ball away at times. And I think Italy could really take advantage of that if that proves to be the case during the match. You know, and if you look at England's performances so far this tournament, they, they've hardly set the world alight either. Ashley Young and James Milner have been pretty average and haven't really provided England with, with many options out wide. And while up front, you know, Rooney coming back to the tournament against Ukraine, he, he did look a little sluggish. And, you know, there's going be questions over his sharpness. When Cassano and Balotelli both seem to find their range against Ireland. So, you know, hopefully they'll be able to continue that form in, into the, the game with England. You know, I, I don't think this is going to be a high-scoring match by any stretch of the imagination, but I do fancy Italy to progress.